in the workshop, and this is a Stuart 504 boiler renovation, part 2. In the last part of the last episode, I spread some JB weld on the castings, on the one on the left hand side to fill a hole, and I filled the right hand casting because it was very untidy around the chimney mounting. I used the belt sander to remove most of the JB weld, just leaving it behind in the holes in the casting. And now I'm finishing off the process with some sandpaper by hand. On this part of the filled casting, I couldn't get in there with the belt sander, so I'm using some very coarse sandpaper. And just like the part that I attacked with the belt sander, I'm removing most of the JB weld, and what's left fills the holes in the casting. And in a very similar manner, I'm doing the same on this part. I really do like using this JB weld product. It's really good for filling castings. I used to use Milliput, that's a two-pack epoxy putty, but I found it really, really hard when it came to the sanding process. Taking a break now from filling the castings, it's time to remove the paint from the chimney. And for this I'm using some Nitromose paint remover. Now this is really nasty stuff, you don't want to get this on your hands because it burns. And as I've mentioned many times before, in the workshop I never wear gloves. And all I'm doing here is just being very careful not to touch the Nitromose. I'm using a really old well-worn paintbrush to apply the Nitromose to the paint. I suppose what I could have done is rub down the existing paint but in my opinion it was too far gone, it was badly chipped and it would have looked really messy. So I'm taking the chimney back to bare metal and just starting again with the paint. These are the side panels and these are quite rusty in places so before I even look at putting paint on these I'm going to have to remove this rust and the quickest way is to go outside and use my orbital sander. Removing this rust from both sides of both of the side panels took quite a long time. And it's very important when you're doing a job like this to tell yourself, look, I have to remove all of this rust. I just can't remove just part of it and hope for the best. And I found myself really having to wrestle with the part of my brain that was saying, oh yeah, that's near enough for jazz, that will do. No, I have to really take this back. Originally, it looks like these side panels were anodized, but over the years, the metal underneath has been attacked by rust. And also, there's some distortion around the holes. And the reason for this is quite simple, and I do want to mention this in detail. The inside edges of the cast iron parts of the boiler mounting are not square, they're actually rounded a little bit. Because these side panels were originally designed to fasten two pieces of asbestos to the cast iron parts. And at some stage in the past, whoever put this boiler together over tightened the bolts a little bit and crushed the asbestos causing the parts of the side panels immediately around the holes to become concave. And that's what I've been doing with the hammer. I've been flattening them again. You will notice that I used a nylon faced hammer because I didn't want to put too much pressure on these parts. It's only very thin steel. And if I put too much pressure on there, they would have been distorted. And then you have a bit of a problem. This is a veritable festival of sandpapering. And it took a lot longer than this and as you notice, I have speeded up the video. I don't normally sand at this speed. But it is quite important, as I mentioned earlier, to get rid of all of the rust. I'm also sanding the anodized part, the part that isn't particularly rusty. Because by sanding the surface like this, particularly with coarse grade sandpaper, it will provide a really good key for the new paint and stop it from flaking off. Time now to look at the boiler fittings. Here they all are. This is before. And this is after. I carefully polished them up using my polishing spindle and a suitable abrasive. And now they look a lot better. The chimney is still sat in the pot with the nitromose in it. First of all I scrape off most of the paint using a steel ruler. Then I take the chimney outside and wash away all of the nitromose with the garden hose pipe. And with every trace of the nitromose now gone, I lightly clamp the chimney in the lathe chuck. I'm running the lathe at quite a fast speed and I just use some sandpaper to remove the rest of the paint. First of all at one end, then I turn it round in the chuck and do the other end. And a health and safety warning, just be careful when you do this. Because this lathe has quite a lot of power and is more than capable of tearing one of my arms off. It's quite simple, never grip the part with the sandpaper too securely and keep your hand away from the chuck. I really am not being flippant with this health and safety warning, but most health and safety is common sense if you think about it for a while. If you watch my videos, you will see me doing things like this fairly frequently. I've been doing this for many years, and I've got at least seven of my fingers in one piece, which is more than I can say for my big toenail on my right foot. 
I dropped a piece of metal on it a couple of months back and that's not looking too healthy at the moment. I think the nail's going to come off. But the piece of metal that fell on the floor was a casting for a cylinder, a large cylinder. And I didn't want it to go on the floor and break, so I used my big toe to stop it. That's not too smart. So another health and safety warning. Don't use your big toe ever to stop a casting from falling on the floor. Because it's quite painful, initially made my eyes water, and now the nail's going to fall off. Anyway, thankfully, I don't need to use my big toe for this job. In fact, thinking about this, quite a lot of years ago, I sold a computer to a young lady with no arms. She hadn't got any arms, none at all. Honestly, completely devoid of arms. Really extremely light in the arm department. And I felt quite uncomfortable because I said to the young lady, I said, well, how are you going to operate the mouse? I mean, with great respect, you don't have any arms. And she said, oh, that's not a problem. And suddenly a leg came up onto the table and she used a foot to move the mouse. And a big toe was fantastic. It was better than mine. I was quite amazed at the dexterity of the young lady's foot. Quite incredible. Anyway, back to the plot. What I'm doing at the moment is using some cellulose putty where I missed one or two bits with the JB Weld. In fact, I didn't put enough JB Weld on there for it to go down into the depressions and fill up the holes. This stuff is called knifing putty or cellulose putty. And it's very, very fine indeed. Even finer than icing sugar. So I suppose you could use this for icing a cake. And another health and safety notice. Please ignore that last comment. Knifing putty is very unsuitable for icing cakes of any kind. Here is a collection of the parts for the boiler. The boiler barrel, the two cast iron mountings, the nicely clean chimney and the brass fittings. The next job is to test the boiler. And in order to perform a hydraulic test on this boiler, I will have to make some blanking plugs. I have a lot of blanking plugs, but they're mainly designed for locomotive boilers that don't use the same thread forms as Stuart Models boilers. I'll show how I make them and what the actual threads are in the next episode. But for the moment, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.